My dear students, today I will be delivering a lecture on endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosome, and peroxisomes. First, let us take off endoplasmic reticulum. It is the main component of the endomembrane system, first discovered independently by Porter and Thompson in 1945. It is a three-dimensional, complicated, and interconnected system of membrane lined channels that runs through the cytoplasm. Its membrane constituting the endoplasmic reticulum has two phases, cytoplasmic or protoplasmic phase, which passes directly to the cytosol, while the luminal phase or endoplasmic phase bordering the cavities of endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum divides the intracellular space of a cell into two compartments, luminal, which is inside the endoplasmic reticulum, and extraluminal, that is, the rest of the cytoplasm. Its membranous system constitutes 30 to 60 percent of the membrane system of the cell, which increases the internal surface of the cell by 30 to 40 times. The size of endoplasmic reticulum varies considerably in different cell types and in relation to their functions. They are usually small in undifferentiated cells but increase their size many folds when the cells start differentiating. There are three principal forms of endoplasmic reticulum. Cisterni, they are long flattened units of 35 to 50 micrometer in thickness, which are arranged parallel in bundles or stacks. They usually occur in those cells which are actively involved in synthetic activity. Vesicles, they are round in shape with a diameter of 27 to 500 micrometer and appear as a small vacuoles. They are formed isolated in the cytoplasm and are also called microsomes. Tubules. They are much irregular branch structure having diameter of 50 to 100 micrometer and form a reticular structure with the cisterni and vesicles. Endoplasmic reticulum can be rough or smooth depending upon the presence of ribosome onto its surface. The rough endoplasmic reticulum has granular or rough appearance as ribosomes are bound to their outer or cytoplasmic surface, while smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no ribosome on its surface, making it look smooth. The ribosomes are attached to the outer surface of endoplasmic reticulum by large 60S subunit. The emerging polypeptide from the ribosomes also establishes a functional link with the endoplasmic reticulum membranes. Rub endoplasmic reticulum is well developed especially in those cells which are actively involved in protein synthesis. In the cells of pancreas where protein synthesis is actively taking place, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is highly developed with parallel stacks of large flattened cisterni occupying the base and the littoral region of cell cytoplasm. Endoplasmic reticulum is poorly developed in those repeatedly dividing cells such as those of plant and animal embryos and those of cancers. Endoplasmic reticulum performs many important functions in a cell. It contributes to the mechanical support of the cytoplasm, has osmotic properties and is involved in intracellular exchanges between the matrix and internal cavity. It also serves as a circulatory system for the transport of various substances. The synthesis of proteins for export is one of the main functions of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Synthesis of lipids and lipoprotein is associated with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum also helps in the detoxification of many endogenous and exogenous compounds. Next, we have Golgi complex. This is a stack of flattened membrane bounded organelles associated with endoplasmic reticulum and is found near the nucleus. 
It can be considered as the differentiated portion of endomembrane system, which is morphologically very similar in plants and animals. The Golgi complex has been a controversial issue in cell structure since its discovery by Camillo Golgi in 1898. According to some, the Golgi complex was an artifact resulting from the prolonged fixation of the cells. But it has been now established that Golgi complexes are definite cell organelles having important functions. Under the observation of electron microscope, the Golgi complex is shown to contain three membranous components having different forms. They are cisterni, flattened sacs arranged in parallel and are separated by space of 20 to 30 micrometer. Each cisterna has an intra cisterni space of 150 angstrom which remains bounded by the unit membrane. Vesicles about 60 micrometer in diameter and are found around the end of the cisterni as they are budded off by the cisterni at their ends. And vacuoles which are large, spacious and rounded sac-like structures occurring in association with the cisterni and are filled with an amorphous or granular content. Each stack of cisterni in Golgi complex has a proximal or forming phase, generally convex and closer to the nuclear envelope or the endoplasmic reticulum, and a distal or maturing phase of concave set enclosing a region containing large secretory vesicles. The forming phase is characterized by the presence of small transition vesicles or tubules that converge upon the Golgi cristerni, forming a kind of fenestrated plate. These transition vesicles are thought to form as valves from the endoplasmic reticulum and to migrate to the Golgi where they coalesce to form a new cisterni. The maturing phase is opposite to endoplasmic reticulum and is often associated with secretory vesicles that are rich in acid phosphatase. Golgi apparatus plays a major role in the glycosidation of lipids and proteins to produce glycolipids and glycoproteins. Glycosyl transferase is involved in the transfer of sugar residues in a sequential order to form glycoproteins. After the protein backbone is synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum, the oligosaccharides of the core are added followed by terminal groups. The glycoproteins formed in this manner may be secreted or incorporated into the cell cord or to the lysosomes. Another important function of Golgi apparatus is in the cell secretion which is not only the secretion of exportable proteins but also of the enzymes which are present in the lysosome and peroxisomes. Then we have lysosomes. Christian D. Dewey isolated in 1949 a class of particles which have centrifugal properties intermediate between those of mitochondria and microsomes. They are found to contain high amount of acid phosphatase and other hydrolytic enzymes and were named as lysosomes. Lysis meaning dissolution and soma means body because of their enzymatic properties. Lysosomes are small vesicles which are bounded by a single membrane and contain hydrolytic enzymes in the form of minute crystalline or semi-crystalline granules of 1 to 2 micrometer. The lysosomes are known to contain about 50 lysosomal hydrolysis which are able to digest most of the biological substances. The membrane enclosing the enzyme is resistant to damp and the entire process of digestion is performed inside the lysosome. Because of this, the rest of the cell is protected from destructive effect 
of enzymes present in the lysosome. The stability of lysosome is highly important for the normal functioning of the cell as under certain physiological conditions, the enzymes may leak from it and it may produce catastrophic consequences to the cells. Lysosomes are considered to be produced by joint activity of endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi complex. Endoplasmic reticulum is the location where the precursor of hydrolytic enzymes are synthesized and from where it is transferred to the forming phase of Golgi complex. The precursor are converted to the enzymes in the Golgi complex followed by packing of the enzymes into larger size vesicles before being pinched off from the maturing phase as primary lysosomes. Lysosome passes through various stages in cell and this phenomenon is called polymorphism or existence of more than one morphological forms. Lysosomes can take four different forms depending on their morphology and functions. Primary lysosomes or storage granules. It is a small body whose enzymatic content is synthesized by the ribosomes and accumulated into the endoplasmic reticulum, followed by transfer into Golgi complex before finally pins off from the maturing phase. These lysosomal bodies contain hydrolytic enzymes in the form of granules. Heterophagosomes or digestive vacuoles or secondary lysosome. When food containing vacuole phagosomes or fluid containing vesicles, pinocytic vesicle formed by phagocytosis and pinocytosis respectively, fuses with lysosome which contain hydrolytic or digestive enzymes. Secondary lysosomes are formed. The food particles are digested by the hydrolytic enzymes inside the secondary lysosome leading to the production of low molecular weight products which pass through the lysosomal membrane and incorporated into the cell for use in metabolic pathways. Residual bodies or tertiary lysosomes. These are the lysosomes in which only indigestible food materials have been left off due to incomplete digestion. The residual bodies pass outwardly and fuse with the plasma membrane to throw out the debris into the external environment by exocytosis or ephagy. The autophagic vacuoles or cytolysosome or autophagosome is a special case found in normal cell in which the lysosome contains a part of the cell in the process of digestion. For example, it may contain a portion of mitochondria or endoplasmic reticulum. Lysosome perform many important functions in a cell. They digest food and various materials taken by cell through phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Lysosomes also digest portion of cell through autophagy and they are also involved in the breakdown of extracellular materials by releasing their digestive enzymes into the surrounding medium. They digest proteins into dipeptide and carbohydrates into monosaccharides. Lysosomes of leukocytes and monocytes are essential in defense against bacteria and viruses. The lysosomes present in the plant seedlings are involved in the hydrolysis and removal of protein and starts during germination. Next we have peroxisomes. These are the membrane-bound organelles isolated by Wolfe and Berger in 1963. They are called peroxisomes as they are specifically involved in the formation and decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. They are avoid granules enclosed by single membrane and contain a fine granular substance that may condense in the center forming an opaque and homogeneous core. The important oxidizing enzymes which are present in the peroxisomes are peroxidase, catalase, D-amino acid oxidase, 
and urate oxidase. The peroxisomes have the average diameter of 0.6 to 0.7 micrometer and the number varied between 70 and 100 in different cells. They are found both in plants and animals apart from their existence in protozoa and yeast. The mechanism of biogenesis of peroxisomes is complex and not completely known. The peroxisomes have lifespan of 5 to 6 days and after which they are destroyed through the process of autophagy. The liver peroxisomes contain four enzymes, urate oxidase, D-amino oxidase, alpha hydroxylic oxidase and catalase. The first three enzymes are involved in the production of hydrogen peroxide while the lone catalase enzyme is responsible for the destruction of hydrogen peroxide. The catalase represents 40% of total protein in the peroxisomes. The main source of hydrogen peroxide is the peroxisomes, but the catalase acts as a safety valve by removing large amount of hydrogen peroxide generated by peroxisomes. The cytolytic hydrogen peroxide and superoxide anion produced by mitochondria and membranes of endoplasmic reticulum are taken care of by glutathione peroxidase and superoxide dimutase. Peroxisomes are also involved in the beta oxidation of fatty acids which is carried out in mitochondria. Apart from their role in beta oxidation of fatty acids, peroxisomes are also involved in initial steps of alkoxy phospholipid biosynthesis which leads to the production of plasma lozins, which are important components of biological membranes. Peroxisomes play an important role in photorespiration of plants. In this process, the glycolic acid, a two-carbon product of photosynthesis, released from the chloroplast is oxidized by enzyme glycolic acid oxidase present in the peroxisomes. The oxidation process leads to the production of hydrogen peroxide, which is degraded by catalase inside the peroxisomes. Finally, we have the conclusion. The four organelles discussed above have important roles to play for the normal functioning of a cell. The endoplasmic reticulum is much branch system of canal-like unit membrane structure which increases the surface area of cytoplasm for various metabolic activities. It also facilitates the easy transport of metabolites and accumulates in the vacuoles for storage. The Zolzi complex consists of a parallel series of platinum vesicles whose functions are secretory, storage, and biogenic in nature. The main function of Golgi complex is the formation of primary lysosome. The lysosome derived from the Golgi complex contain enzymes with hydrolase activity and are involved in the digestion of large extracellular and intracellular particles. Autophagy and disposal of useless cell constituents. Peroxisome is one of the microbodies found in plant and animal tissues containing number of flavin oxidases which are involved in hydrogen peroxide production during degradative activity. Peroxisomes play an important role in photorespiration in plants. The catalase of peroxisomes degrades the hydrogen peroxide produced during the oxidation process of photorespiration. <laughs>